This is a talk about the spiritual exercises or meditation exercises used in the Ekankar cult. Now we have looked at the future plans of Ekankar, we have looked at the theology of Ekankar to some extent, we have looked at the initiations in the Ekankar cult and we have a lot of criticisms of them, I suggest facial criticisms, but surely the spiritual exercises, the meditation exercises in Ekankar are sacred. Surely there the individual can commune with the Ek and with the departed Ekankar masters and ascend into some higher level of spirituality. Unfortunately not. The spiritual exercises of Ekankar are simply control systems by which the Ekankar leadership takes gradual control over the initiate. The procedure is that the Ekankar initiate is asked to look into his third eye, roughly equivalent with the center of the forehead here. And um, by focusing on that point to see a vision of the Ekankar leader currently Harold Klemp or one of his colleagues and to bask in that vision or in some cases to go on a trip to another world and have some kind of fantastic experience. And all of this is, as we have mentioned before, a kind of entertainment of a spiritual kind, gratifying uh, the ego and making one feel extremely important and a member of the spiritual elite on the earth. Well it's not quite like that really. What actually happens in the process is that, and this is pretty obvious, the initiate opens themselves to the Ekankar leader and allows the Ekankar leader in his mind and in his spirit to take control of you. After all you are looking for him and by looking for him, you will find him. But what you will find is not what the Ekengar books tell you you will find. You will not find the uh, the appointed senior representative of God on earth because the Ekengar leaders are magicians, black magicians. And if they're challenged, extremely vicious and violent black magicians. There are a number of victims around the world quite destroyed by their activities when challenged. So if you really want to put yourself in the hands of a black magician and cast all common sense aside, so be it. But if you are hoping to find God in Ekankar, you better pay attention to this talk. What you are doing is to put yourselves in the hands of ruthless, exploitative magicians who use you for power. How do they do that? By gaining control of your emotions, mind and inner spirit through a gradual process of drawing your uh, attention in those spheres of your life onto them, you become someone they control and by that they gain power just as any general without an army is powerless because he's got no one to send to kill people by the time he's acquired an army he has stature importance and significance and most important of all he can send his army out to kill people so in the Ekinka, uh world the living master or the dead master the master of the Ekinka group gains power and the ability to send out his troops to gain control of other people, other places. It is an exercise in power. Now, the Ekankar books promise the world and ask you to give an awful lot in time and money, but actually you get nothing. You get sensational experiences maybe, 
But in terms of spiritual development, you get precisely nothing. The common experience in Ekankar is that however long you stay in it, you do not change, you do not grow emotionally, mentally or spiritually. You may think you do, but when you leave, you discover that you've just wasted time. By comparison, if you submit yourselves to God, and any religion will do, in fact, you don't even need a religion. If you submit yourself to God, you do not need to travel to a fantastical monastery to meet um, various Tibetan monks in maroon robes. You simply submit to God and God comes into you. It is as simple as that. It's a bit like getting into a bath with no water in it, turning on the tap and filling up the bath with hot and cold water until you feel comfortable. And then you have your, you have your bath. Uh, in the same way, if you submit yourself to God openly, humbly, with no thoughts about it, no reservations, God comes into you, not with a thunderclap, it takes time, but it happens really quite fast considering the brevity of human existence. And over a period of time, you're subtly changed. You become more conscious of the bad things within you and more conscious of the things you can do to elevate yourself. And gradually you become more spiritualized and less focused upon the things of this world. You do not need to submit to a man. You do not need to have a living master or a dead master. You don't need to visit temples. You don't need to read funny little books you simply need to submit to God now for those who say well you need a guide to take you away from the traps of this world this is just nonsense all you need to do is to be alert if something deceptive presents itself see if what it is well they may say there are lots of terrifying spirits that want to take you over but these terrifying spirits are actually more vulnerable than you are. They just want attention. Literally, everything created by God, including terrifying demonic spirits, either is in tune with God, that's to say with their inner spiritual substance, which is God, or they have, through illusion, departed from God, and then they want to uh, have their own separate existence, their own separate power, and all that kind of thing. But they still feel cut off in God and desperately want to be back part of God. This is the problem that the demons all the way up to Lucifer face. They can't forget the beauty, peace, calm and wonder of being in God. It's unforgettable. It always remains within each person, demon, human, creature, whatever you are. So if you find some terrifying apparition then all you have to do is to remember that all this thing wants is attention nothing more than your attention so don't give it there is the famous story of lucifer who um discovering that he had been awakened in the middle of the night looked up and saw the satan had appeared fully in the physical form and he said, oh, you, and turned over and went back to sleep. And that is exactly how one needs to behave, no matter how persistent they are. So you don't need Ekinkar. And if you're in it, you better get out of it, because it is a treacherous and absolutely devouring and obsessively possessive path controlled by possessive people. So that's 10 minutes on the spiritual exercises of Ekinkar. Thank you.